The most distinctive feature of human species has been the immense diversity in culture and behavior, from simple hunter-gatherer societies to complex industrial societies, humans have mastered the art of cultural creativity. Between all this, the incest taboo has remained a universal and enduring aspect of human social organization. The incest taboo is still considered one of the greatest mysteries of human social behavior. The taboo against incest takes on different forms and intensity levels across the world. Is it a biological instinct or a cultural phenomenon? We will explore different explanations and debunk some common myths. Stay tuned to find out why incest taboo is the most rigidly enforced regulation found in all cultures. If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel. Although incest has been a fascinating subject in science and literature, there is still no conclusive explanation for its universal presence. To begin with, let's define what we mean by incest. Incest is the act of marrying blood relatives or close family members such as siblings, parents or parents' siblings or cousins. Incest taboo is any cultural norm or rule that prohibits such relationships. The incest taboo universally prohibits sexual relationships or marriage between close family members such as mother and son father and daughter or siblings. While a few royal and aristocratic families have permitted incest, no society today allows it within the nuclear family. Some cultures have a narrow definition of incest that limits it to sexual relationships between parents and children or siblings, while others include any close relatives like cousins or aunts and uncles. The severity of the taboo can also vary from being a heinous crime in some cultures to being socially acceptable in others. In Japan, for instance, incest is limited to parents and children or siblings, while in many parts of Africa it includes all close relatives. Some cultures strongly prohibit marriage between members of the same lineage or clan. Within a single culture, the severity of the taboo may vary depending on factors like social, class, or religion. For example, some communities and castes of India allow marriages between first cousins, while in others, they are strictly prohibited. Similarly, in some Muslim societies, marriage between Pala cousins are encouraged, while in others, they are discouraged or even forbidden. People debate whether incest is a biological or cultural phenomenon. One of the explanations for the universality of incest taboo is that it's instinctive and has biological basis. However, this idea does not provide a meaningful explanation for the phenomena. Claiming that an instinctive feeling or revulsion towards incest exists does not account for why societies need to enact laws to prevent it. If the feelings were truly universal and powerful, such laws would not be needed. Furthermore, the fact that different societies have different definitions of incestuous relationships such as whether marriage with a first cousin is allowed or not suggests that the instinct theory cannot account for these variations. For instance, it's considered incestuous to marry a parlor cousin in some societies but it's considered permissible to marry a cross cousin in others. Therefore. The instinct theory fails to provide a comprehensive explanation for the existence of incest taboos. One possible reason for incest taboo can be that it promotes outbreeding, that means looking for marriage partners outside of one's own social group, which seems to be an effective strategy towards reducing the potential negative genetic consequences of inbreeding, called inbreeding depression. The genetic consequences of inbreeding can include an increased risk of genetic disorders and health problems, as well as a reduction in genetic diversity within a population. Inbreeding can lead to the expression of harmful recessive traits that may be masked in a population with greater genetic diversity. This can also increase the likelihood of offspring with genetic defects or disorders. From an evolutionary perspective, 
The inbreeding theory of incest taboo suggests that humans have developed a natural aversion to incest as a way of avoiding the negative genetic consequences of inbreeding. In other words, the taboo against incest may have emerged as an adoptive response to the risks posed by inbreeding. The theory of inbreeding offers a possible explanation for the universal existence of incest taboo, but the specific reasons for the taboo may differ across cultures, and other factors such as cultural beliefs and values may also influence it. Additionally, some tribal societies may be unaware of the link between sexual intercourse and pregnancy due to their tendency to explain natural phenomena through supernatural agents. As their relationship between sexual intercourse and pregnancy is not self-evident and pregnancy does not always follow intercourse, this claim has been made by some ethnographers, although it has been challenged by others. Malinowski, for example, claims that the Trobrian Islanders denied that copulation has anything to do with pregnancy, not only among human beings but also among the lower animals. Although this claim has been challenged, the effects of inbreeding can only be understood through complex statistical calculations which are unlikely to have been understood by our ancestors. Moreover, if we assume that inbreeding does produce degeneracy and our ancestors recognized this fact, it's unclear why they prohibited marriage with parlor cousins while allowing or even requiring unions with cross cousins as both are biologically close. Similarly, why did some societies prohibit marriage with clansmen despite the remoteness of the blood tie while permitting marriage with non-clansmen who were close blood relatives. The questions suggest that there may have been additional factors beyond biological relatedness that influence the incest taboo. Recent research has provided support for the argument that humans naturally avoid marrying their close relatives. This avoidance is attributed to Westmark effect, which suggests that a lack of sexual attraction exists between close family members. According to childhood familiarity hypothesis, the taboo against incest arises from childhood associations and familiarity between family members. Children develop a natural aversion to sexual relations with family members based on their early socialization experiences and the closeness of their family relationships. The hypothesis suggests that because children are raised in close proximity to their family members, they are less likely to develop sexual attraction towards them as they grow up. This aversion is reinforced by cultural norms and values that emphasize the importance of family harmony and social order and discourage sexual relationships between family members. On researching Israeli kibbutzim communities, Sipiro noted that children of the same age who were raised together from birth in these collective communities spontaneously developed an implicit behavioral aversion to sibling incest. These community centers were overseen by special nurses, and the children became emotionally close like siblings even though they were not classified as such by the community. Despite there being no social sanctions against it, there have been no reported cases of intermarriage between young adults brought up in the same age group within the kibbutz. But how does Westmark effect work? Humans have a natural mechanism that helps them to avoid mating with close relatives. This mechanism is based on cognitive processes that assess genetic relatedness between potential sexual partners. Facial recognitions play an important role in this process, as people can compare physical cues of an individual's face to a family template to determine relatedness. Studies have shown that having opposite sex siblings can affect people's sexual attitudes towards individuals who resemble them facially, even if they are unrelated. Phenotypic traits have been studied in humans and animals as cues for identifying kin. Avian species use auditory vocal signals, while similarity in order is used by both 
humans and mammals to differentiate between kin and non-kin. But why do we need elaborate social norms for something if we already dislike it biologically? Leslie White, a famous anthropologist, suggests that we need to look for social and cultural antecedents for understanding insustable. The theory of family disruption proposes that the primary function for the insustable is to prevent the disruption of family structures and relationships. The theory suggests that incestuous relationships have the potential cause significant harm to family relationships and can lead to conflicts and disruptions that undermine the stability of the family unit. According to this theory, the incest taboo emerged as a way of preventing the family unit by establishing clear boundaries between acceptable and unacceptable sexual relationships. Incestuous relationships were considered taboo because they threatened the traditional family structure and social order and could lead to a breakdown of the family unit. The family disruption also suggests that incestuous serves as a way of protecting the vulnerable family members from sexual exploitation and abuse. Incestuous relationships can create power imbalances and lead to exploitation of younger or more vulnerable family members. By prohibiting these types of relationships, the incest taboo can help to protect family members from harm and promote their well-being. On the whole, the family disruption theory emphasizes the social and cultural functions of the incest taboo, rather than its biological or genetic consequences. In his book, Totem and Taboo, Sigmund Freud presents a dramatic explanation for the origin of incest taboo. According to Freud, in the earliest stage of human society, a powerful male, the father, dominated small groups and monopolized all females, including daughters and mothers. As the young males matured, the father drove them away to prevent them from sharing his females. Eventually, the expelled brothers joined forces killed and ate the father, but did not divide his women among themselves as plant. Instead, they pledged to seek mates elsewhere and passed on this pledge to future generations. This gave rise to the incest taboo and the institution of exogamy. This story may find an analog in some primates such as gorillas where a single silverback male takes control of all the females and dominates the younger blackback gorillas. Philopatry is the tendency of offsprings to remain in their natal group or troop. In male philopatry observed in several old world monkeys, female offsprings disperse to other groups when they reach to sexual maturity. In female phylopatry, observed in chimpanzees and some human societies, male offspring disperse to other groups. These behaviors include math choice based on genetic relatedness and sexual avoidance towards close relatives. For example, chimpanzees of both sexes will avoid mating with their siblings and other close kin. Macaws will show preference for mating with non-relatives. These behaviors have the potential of providing insight into the evolution of incest avoidance in humans. Although, research suggests that pilopatry may have other reasons than inbreeding avoidance. The shared pattern of male phylopatry and female dispersal into our two closest living relatives suggests that lost common ancestor of humans and African apes showed this pattern. The psychoanalytic theory of incest proposes that the incest taboo is rooted in unconscious psychological mechanisms related to Oedipus complex. According to this theory, the Oedipus complex is a normal stage of human psychosexual development in which children develop unconscious sexual desires for their opposite sex parent and a desire to replace their same sex parent. The psychoanalytic theory suggests that incest taboo emerges as a result of resolution of the Oedipus and Electra complex.
Otto Wolf's study of Taiwanese marriage customs found evidence that a form of sexual avoidance exists between individuals who were brought together as childhood associates and later became spouses due to economic reasons. Wolf rejects institutional explanation for the phenomena and instead argues for psychological theories of reaction formation and negative conditioning. Reaction formation is a psychological defense mechanism in which an individual unconsciously replaces an unacceptable or anxiety-provoking impulse or emotion with its opposed. Negative conditioning is a type of learning in which a behavior is reduced or suppressed as a result of experiencing negative consequences of punishment after performing that behavior. These psychological mechanisms can lead to the formation of avoidance and avoidance behaviors towards certain stimuli or situations that have been associated with negative outcomes. Wolf suggests that socialization experiences of childhood containment of impulses creates a strong emotional resistance to sexual relations. Leslie White argues that the idea that incestuous desire is instinctive is unwarranted. A child's sexual desire are not inherently focused on relatives but rather on individuals who are close to them due to proximity and satisfaction. This inclination towards inbreeding is present in subhuman primate families but in human society it's incompatible with a cooperative way of life that depends on mutual aid for survival. The tribe that best exploits the possibilities of mutual aid has the best chance of survival. Cooperation is crucial for subsistence and defense against enemies. The cooperative organizations in human society was initially limited to family groups. However, to extend the scope of mutual aid, Cooperation had to be established between families as well. The prohibition of incest played a crucial role in this expansion. Families became units in the cooperative process and marriage became contracts between families, later extending to even larger groups. The origin of incest taboo therefore can be traced back to prehistoric societies where they were faced with the choice of either marrying out or being killed out. Alliance theory of incest taboo suggests that the primary function of taboo is to promote and regulate formation of social alliances between different families and kinship groups. According to this theory, the taboo emerged as a way of promoting the exchange of resources such as goods and services between different families. The alliance theory proposes that the taboo serves to promote the formation of exogamous marriages or marriages between individuals from different families or kinship groups. By prohibiting sexual relationships between close family members, the taboo forces individuals to seek partners outside of their own family or kin group, which promotes the exchange of resources and the formation of social alliances. The alliance theory also suggests that the taboo serves to regulate the distribution of power and wealth within a society. Exogamous marriages prevent the concentration of power and wealth within a single family or kin group, therefore promoting social stability and preventing conflict. Effective dissonance theory given by George D. Voss argues that sexual attraction is highly dependent on harmony between different emotions. He argued that incest aversion emerges from a conflict between familial amity which disposes individuals against aggression and sexual arousal which they experience as aggressive arousal. The theory suggests that people who grow up together develop mutual feelings of amity that inhibit sexual attraction. People who live together since childhood lose interest in each other sexually. He thought that this theory could explain why different cultures have different rules about incest. In conclusion, we can say that while the reasons for the existence of incest taboo vary across cultures and societies, it remains a universal norm that is deeply ingrained in human behavior and psychology. Incest taboo is present at two levels, one as a psychologically driven avoidance and other as a socially enacted taboo. We hope that you found this video informative and thought-provoking. Thank you for watching.